Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now I've outlined a section of the silver price chart here that I want you to keep an eye on here. Uh, mainly the downtrend line that we have in place since 2011 and also the increase in contract volume that we've had during the same time frame really starting in 2013. So what we're going to look at is this alleged JP Morgan silver stockpile. Uh, this is something that was mentioned by Bix Weir in his most recent video. It's also something that's mentioned by Ted Butler in his most recent article that was posted to Silver Doctors. And uh, the claim is that JP Morgan has a silver cache of 550 million physical ounces. Uh, let's read some of this. It is also appropriate to consider just who them boys might be that the technical funds may be setting out to fix. One boy certainly won't be JP Morgan. Sure, JP Morgan has been the big comic silver short for the past nine years, but it has also taken the opportunity over the past six years to build up the largest physical stockpile of silver in history of some 550 million ounces, thus immunizing the bank against any net loss on rising silver prices. There is no way JP Morgan could not come out way ahead in the silver price rally, but the same can't be said of the other seven large commercial shorts on the COMEX, mostly foreign banks. So this is the proposition that we're asked to believe that over the last He's claiming over the past six years that J.P. Morgan has accumulated 550 million physical ounces. Now, if you look at the chart here, um, so this this has to have been done during this entire decline and during this entire increase of volume. So I wanted to dig into that because this is something that's now being kind of uh, passed around as uh, just a fact that no one questions and I want to question this. Before we do that let's take a look at the cryptocurrencies here. Now uh, we're up to about 26 billion dollars in market cap on the cryptocurrencies. As I said before Bitcoin has a short window here to break out into new highs and run hard otherwise it's going to turn down if it's going to repeat the pattern that it has done in the past of breaking into new highs and then moving many fold. So the window is growing shorter. It's starting to look more like it's going to go down. But I wanted to emphasize the fact that it's not just Bitcoin that's increasing in market cap. You can see that uh, if we let's go ahead and list these by market cap. You can see that Bitcoin comes on top at about 20 billion. Now, not too long ago, we were at 13 billion for the entire cryptocurrency space. But you can see that Ethereum is almost up to $2 billion. Now, Dash has been on a tear of late. And you can see Dash is all the way up in third place now at $325 million. Dash is formerly Dark Coin. And this is a coin that incorporates anonymity into uh, the algorithm. So uh, that's a different idea. You can also see Monero here at 215 million and Ripple 200 million, Litecoin 200 million. So we have really about five or six coins that can operate in the space of uh, avoiding capital controls, doing what cryptocurrencies need to do which is allow people to transfer wealth from one jurisdiction to another without government interference. And uh, there's a lot of question about Bitcoin's transaction times. There's questions about the blockchain and the size. There's a lot of questions, but I just want to throw out the idea here that the slow rise of Bitcoin is actually a good thing because these other cryptocurrencies are denominated in Bitcoin and as they develop it creates an opportunity for alternatives so that if any one particular cryptocurrency fails there are others there to fill in the role. 
of uh, being a way to avoid capital controls, to have a shadow economy, and do all the things that cryptocurrencies do. So for me, it's a positive that it's taking Bitcoin so long to get into new highs. A $20 billion market cap uh, is big, or $25 billion for the whole sector is large relatively to what it's been, but at the same time, relative to what's going on in the economy, it's tiny. For example, I think the recent figures I read was that the amount of market cap that was at, has been added to the stock markets, I think it's just U.S. stock markets, it may be world stock markets, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in just U.S. stock markets, the amount of market cap added since Trump was inaugurated has been four trillion dollars so the entire market cap of all cryptocurrencies added together is roughly half of one percent of the amount of value that's been added to just the stock markets of the world since Trump was elected so that gives you an idea of how out of balance this is now let's dig into this question of this gigantic stash that JP Morgan has. Um, Ted Butler's claim that JP Morgan has 550 million ounces um, immunizing them against the loss. Uh, we're not really given any evidence of where they got this silver. And my first question is, is this really true? Can we trust Ted Butler? Can we trust JP Morgan? So I did some independent analysis from the Silver Institute and uh, from the coin figures, and it doesn't add up for me. But let's start out by reading the uh, Jeff Nielsen article on this uh, supposed silver hoard here. And this is the article called J.P. Morgan's Imaginary Silver Hoard is explained by Jeff Nielsen. Now this is actually two years ago. And at the time of the writing here, I think the claim was that the stockpile was roughly 350 million ounces. Now Ted Butler is saying it's 550 million ounces. So let's read this. Over the past couple of months, several respected commentators and, of course, the mainstream media have been reporting that J.P. Morgan has supposedly amassed a gigantic hoard of physical silver roughly twice as large as what was amassed by the Hunt brothers and their cartel back in 1980 when the Hunt brothers were formally charged and convicted of cornering the silver market. This report was previously greeted with extreme skepticism in a previous commentary for a multitude of reasons. When the Hunt brothers were charged slash convicted of cornering the market, their hoard accounted for less than 20% of total global inventories, yet this squeeze on the market resulted in the price of silver soaring by a factor of 10, i.e. 1,000%. The J.P. Morgan silver hoard is supposed to be twice as large as that of the Hunt brothers, yet it comes at a time where global silver inventories are at best one quarter as large as back in 1980. In other words, the J.P. Morgan silver hoard, if it existed, would represent a market concentration of at least eight times as extreme as that of the Hunt brothers. Yet, while J.P. Morgan has been accumulating this supposed hoard, the price of silver has been falling. Let me repeat this point to ensure that is clearly grasped by readers. We have a supposed market concentration today in the silver market by J.P. Morgan, which is eight times as extreme as that of the Hunt brothers when the price of silver increased by a thousand percent. Yet today, the price of silver has been falling, not spiking higher. How is this possible? It's not. There is no rational, legitimate market or universe where a market concentration of this supposed magnitude could not result in a dramatic upward spike in price, period. Certainly, if this much silver was ever dumped onto the market rather than supposedly withdrawn from the market, we know what would happen to the price of silver. It would plummet lower. Obviously, markets by definition move in two directions. If dumping massive amounts of silver and even paper called silver onto the market causes prices to crash, always then withdrawing massive quantities of physical silver from the market must cause prices to soar, always. 
This brings us to the explanation of J.P. Morgan's latest gigantic silver fraud and the purpose behind that fraud. Further enlightenment comes via the interesting observations of Bill Holter from June 20, uh, 26th. First, we have an insane situation brewing in Comex Silver. The open interest finally exceeded 200,000 contracts, 1 billion ounces. I believe the only other time this much open interest existed was back in 1980 or 81. This makes no sense whatsoever. The price is again plumbing four-year lows, yet open interest has moved to record highs. In other words, we have Mr. Holter reporting a market insanity precisely parallel to what was just noted before this, where J.P. Morgan has purportedly accumulated an extreme long position in the silver market, larger and more, an extreme, more extreme than in 1980, yet the price has gone down rather than up. Holter continues, the fact open interest has expanded while prices declined is proof positive the initiation of this expanded open interest has been by shorts, but absorbed by someone on the other side of the trade. Total global production of silver is only 800 million ounces or thereabouts, so COMEX shorts have contracted to deliver 25% more silver than will even be produced globally over the next 12 months. Silver available for COMEX delivery totals only 57 million ounces, so they sit on a naked short time bomb of more than 950 million ounces. Enter J.P. Morgan. Obviously, one does not have to be Sherlock Holmes to deduce who the someone on the other side of the trade is. They are the facilitator for the construction of this gigantic illegal short position. In an ironic example of role reversal, we have J.P. Morgan playing the part of the Patsy Long absorbing all the bets on the other side in this serial shorting by other big bank tentacles of the one bank. Simultaneously, we have J.P. Morgan claiming to have accumulated a massive hoard of physical silver when the market tells us this could not possibly have occurred. Hence, we know that J.P. Morgan's silver hoard is imaginary silver. But this begs an obvious question. Why would the most notorious silver short in the history of the silver market pretend to accumulate a massive long position while still holding a large short position itself? To say that this makes absolutely no sense is the greatest of understatement. Obviously, there had to be an ulterior motive to this sham, as J.P. Morgan would certainly never engage in any behavior to deliberately drive up the price of silver, which is precisely what it seemed to be doing here. Now, via Bill Holter, we see this ulterior motive plain as day. They, the one bank, sit on a naked short time bomb of more than 950 million ounces. How do you defuse an absurdly gigantic naked short time bomb in the silver market? With an absurdly gigantic hoard of physical silver conveniently delivered to the market as needed to prevent the implosion of this time bomb. And in our criminalized system, if you don't have a hoard of real silver available for this diffusing imaginary silver will be a perfectly good substitute. Let me refer back to the commentary which first scoffed at reports of J.P. Morgan's imaginary silver hoard. The purpose of J.P. Morgan pretending to hold a massive long position, that's an easy one. If J.P. Morgan pretends to be holding 350 million ounce hoard of silver, notice it's now reported by Ted Butler, a 550 million ounce hoard. So we're to believe that J.P. Morgan's added 200 million ounces to this hoard since this article was written. And its criminal accomplices who operate and supposedly police these markets go along with this massive sham, that is 350 million ounces of silver, which this fraud factory could claim to dump onto the market as part of some future operation to crash the price of silver. This is exactly what we seem to be seeing now, except with one different wrinkle. Instead of J.P. Morgan's imaginary silver hoard being used to drive down the price of silver still further from already extreme depressed levels, this imaginary silver hoard will be dumped onto the market to cover the shorts to prevent an explosive rise in the price of silver when these naked shorts would otherwise implode. All that remains is to put this latest operation in the silver market in the overall context of the looming economic catastrophe, which approaches the next, and this goes into dated stuff where he's obviously wrong. So here's the question that we need to look at. Did J.P. Morgan really accumulate this massive uh, physical long position? So I want to start by looking at the 
silver supply and demand from the Silver Institute. So we're going to believe that this column of mine production is an accurate figure. I don't know if any of these figures are accurate figures, but assuming that the mine production figure is accurate, you can see that uh, even though in the face of falling prices since 2011, the amount of mine production has steadily increased. Now, there's also a very large number for scrap, and I have serious doubts as to whether that's an accurate number. Uh, where does this scrap come from? 250 million ounces of scrap silver. You can see that it is falling off dramatically when we get into these later years here. But given the scrap added to it, it gets us to about a billion ounces of silver a year. Uh, I think it's probably closer to that 800 number, but we'll just give them that. So if we look at industrial fabrication, that's the largest factor here. You can see that in 2011 we had 673. We stayed above 600, dipped down below 600 in 2015. And so that's uh, a large percentage of that billion ounces or an even larger percentage of the 800 million now, if we look at jewelry, you can see that jewelry is close to 200 million ounces a year. So now we're talking about 800 plus or even approaching 900. Now, that leaves just the coins and bars. And you can see the figures that have been reported. We know that investment in silver uh, for stackers has increased dramatically. You can see back in 2006, it was only 50 million ounces. We're now looking at almost 300 million ounces for 2015. So for a good five years, we've been talking about nearly 200 million or more ounces. Add that to the industrial and jewelry, and the big question is, where is JP Morgan getting the silver that they're putting into this stockpile? Supposedly, since the article was written in I think it was 2013 that Jeff Nielsen wrote that article, JP Morgan has increased their stockpile from 350 million to 550 million. 200 million more ounces of physical silver have been added. So where did that silver come from? I just don't see it in these numbers. Now let's look at the bullion silver coin sales. This is just the bullion coins. So you can see that from roughly 2010, barring a big drop in uh, 2012 after the crash, we've had almost 90, 90 to 100 million ounces in silver bullion coin sales. So we have to go and subtract that from this number of coins and bars because if JP Morgan is stacking silver bars, which I think if they have this 550 million ounce stockpile, it would have to be 1,000 ounce bars. Uh, then we have to subtract this number from the coins and bars number because we know these are not bars. Now, another number that we have to look at, which we don't have the information on, is bars like 10 ounce bars, 100 ounce bars, and uh, 1,000 ounce bars that are being accumulated by other parties, ETFs, private parties, other banks, because you can see these figures just include Australian silver uh, bullion, American eagles, philharmonics, and maple leafs. This doesn't include all the other collector coins, which there are a number of. There are the elephants. There are other countries. There's New Zealand. I don't think those are significant numbers, but they're, they're adding to that number. And again, the number of bars uh, that people are buying are not added in here. And there's a lot of companies, Northwest Territorial Mint, Atmex, uh, Provident, they all also uh, sell bars. So that number is not here. So if we take 100 million and we take 200 million, that's 300 million, and we're talking about 600 million or more, uh, where is JP Morgan getting this physical silver? The numbers don't add up. Now I pointed out before that the numbers from the Silver Institute simply don't add up. You can just look at this uh, physical surplus deficit and you can see that since 2011 we're talking about a very large deficit 
2013, 150 million ounces of silver. Where did it come from? No one knows. 2014, 78 million ounces of silver that uh, just appeared to satisfy demand, but no one knows where it came from. 2015, 129 million ounces, the difference between the total supply, uh, the mining and the scrap, and the net hedging, which is also a bogus number. So you can see here, not only are the Silver Institute's numbers very questionable, but uh, JP Morgan's numbers are also very questionable. I have serious doubts as to whether JP Morgan actually has this giant physical silver position. So the question you have to ask yourself is why are people like Ted Butler, and I believe it was Bix Weir also, mentioning this gigantic hoard of silver? Well, uh, if JP Morgan has that gigantic hoard of physical silver, then that is one way that the powers that be can avoid a default on the COMEX, the LBMA, any of these. And we just had the story that broke today from Bix Weir about uh, reorganization again on the silver fix. Uh, and I'll cover that another time. But um, we have all these people who are involved in rigging the price of silver. And we're to believe that... Uh, it's bullish that JP Morgan holds a 550 million ounce uh, silver stash that if there is a problem on one of the exchanges, they can obviously deliver that silver. Whereas if it's the case that JP Morgan is just simply making this up, then the reason for that would be clear that they can use that imaginary silver that they don't really have to hold over the head of the market and to discourage investors, and I think that's exactly why this is being reported. Um, I'm interested in your comments. Tell me what you think about this, and we'll talk to you next time.